Next up, we have Marion. Uh, she's talking about the future of WordPress. Is it headless? Miriam is the co-founder and CEO of Stratic, an end-to-end -end static hosting and publishing platform for WordPress websites. After years of dealing with ongoing struggle of keeping client WordPress sites secure and performant at her agency, Miriam realized that these issues could be solved in a radical way by converting the sites to a static Jamstack architecture, and she founded Stratic. So welcome to the stage, Miriam. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me. It's nice to meet you. Take it away. Nice to meet you too. All right, so get going. Um, okay, so we're going to be talking about is the future of WordPress headless? Um, you have probably heard the term headless WordPress. It's being kind of bandied around a lot and there's a lot of interest in it. So I'm going to talk about what that means for us and uh, what does it mean for our future? So WordPress is growing like crazy. It's just skyrocketing and it continues to grow. It's not like it's slowing down. Um, WordPress grows, I think it's like every two months, 3%, 3% of the internet, more additional 3% becomes a word part of the WordPress uh, market or space. And uh, that's more than the entire market share of a platform like Shopify, which is the next largest um, content management system. So it's growing like crazy. Um, and it keeps growing because it's awesome. What do we love about WordPress? Why do people continue to use it? It's really easy to install it and get up and running with it. It's easy to use once it's installed. The WYSIWYG editor, now Gutenberg, helps you create pages without having to know how to code um, and publish them and preview them really, really easily. Um, there's an enthusiastic community like this one of people who are interested in supporting, contributing, creating plugins, themes, and other solutions and services around, around uh, WordPress. Um, the plugin ecosystem uh, allows anybody to just install something and get functionality out of the box without having to code it, which is amazing. But as WordPress is growing, there are issues which many people experience related to speed, security, and scalability. So if you have a WordPress site, it's very possible at some point you've experienced one of these issues. So your site might feel slow and sluggish or more slow at particular times. Um, you may have experienced a breach of your site due to some kind of vulnerability. Sometimes you don't even know the vulnerability is there. And then once that happens, cleaning up the site can be a big pain. Um, so because uh, the the, vol the hackers often leave a back door, which is hard to clean up, and then they'll keep hacking your site until you figure that out. And scaling the site, either for an influx of traffic or low-level DDoS attacks, also can be challenging, and sites can often slow down and crash. Um, and as time has gone on, we've seen that WordPress sites um, are slow, are getting slower. And you know, every day, practically, there's a new vulnerability of something related to WordPress that is uh, publicized. Uh, one of the reasons behind why WordPress has these issues is its architecture. Um, the architecture is what's known as monolithic. So the admin, which is where you log into and manage the content, and the front end, which is what reflects your content updates, are smacked together. They're one in the same, part of the same installation, and everything uh, just kind of lives together. That gives a lot of advantages. Oops. Um, Oh, right. And because of that monolithic architecture, your whole site is also connected to many different layers of languages and databases and all this kind of stuff. Um, and all of that impacts the functioning of your site. So you have many layers that are powering the site, but also many layers that could be potential points of failure. Um, so you've got that going on with the monolithic architecture and uh, and all of those layers. But um, also developers aren't so excited about WordPress. In 2020, there was a developer survey that was conducted and WordPress was deemed one of the most dreaded uh, platforms to work with by developers. Um, so what does this all mean and what can we do for WordPress? We've got these issues, we can't really deny them. Um, and a lot of people experience them and they, they cause headaches and also the developer community at large outside of WordPress is not necessarily excited about working with WordPress due to its stack, the LAMP stack, um, and also these issues that cause, uh, that cause uh, speed, security, and scalability um, issues. So headless to the rescue, maybe. Let's talk about what headless is. So headless separates the backend content management from the front end display. It's also known as decoupled. Um, I'll show you what that means. Can, you can use any technology for the front end. So if you're building a WordPress site, uh, you use a theme, and that theme is based in 
on PHP, the programming language. Um, when you've decoupled the WordPress admin from the front end, that front end that is showing your changes can actually be based on any language. Um, so React, Next.js, et cetera, which are more popular among developers. Um, the content is accessible via REST or GraphQL API for display anywhere. So it kind of makes your content more portable and um, you can publicize it or publish it to many different medium, not media, not just your site. It could go to an app and um, other places. Um, and the front end can also be rendered through a static site generation process. So that means that you run like a build process across your site and then it generates each page so that it's pre-rendered and, and ready to serve. In standard WordPress, if someone requests to view a page, that page is built for them in real time. It doesn't actually exist as a standalone file. And you doing that site, static site generation process has a number of benefits. So this is what a uh, headless architecture looks like. You've got the WP admin and you've got the headless, but they're not, they don't, they're not, you know, one in the same. They're not directly connected to each other anymore. Um, and, you know, the headless is managed separately um, and developed separately from the WP admin. And the headless gets its content through the REST API or the Gra WP GraphQL um, endpoints. And that's how the content gets pushed into the front end. What are the benefits of headless WordPress? It's very fast. Uh, generally, often, it can have issues, but uh, you could say in general it's fast. Um, if you do a static site generation process, then every page is pre-rendered and it can be fully served up through a content delivery network. So it's fast everywhere in the world. Uh, standard WordPress site, unless it's super cached and caching can be tricky, uh, it can't be fully served up through CDN because the pages, the content pages don't actually exist. They're not standalone pages. Um, the attack surface is reduced by over 99%. All of those layers, the Apache, PH, PHP, MySQL, and all the plugins in WordPress itself, they're no longer a factor. They're not connected to the front end. They're not there. And so there's very little to attack and hack. Um, they're effortlessly scalable. Again, everything here is, is like with a caveat, but let's say in general, they're effortlessly scalable, particularly if they're truly pure static files then uh, even if a site is hit with a crazy amount of traffic or even some kind of DDoS attack, it generally will scale effortlessly and uh, won't go down. And sometimes you won't even know that that has happened. Um, it's modern and shiny, which is more appealing to developers. There's less WP ops. So this is a term I saw somewhere and I can't remember where, but I like it very much. It refers to the ops, the management that goes into having a WordPress site. Is the server up and running? Are there backups? Are the updates happening? Is there, um, will it scale? Are there are enough resources, etc. And all of that attention that WordPress needs can be called WP Ops. Um, and with headless WordPress, in some, some cases, in every case, you can use the WordPress admin if you're using WordPress as the decoupled CMS, except for in, not in any, every case can use WordPress as you're used to, and I'll explain why. But in some cases you can. So what are the issues with headless WordPress? You can't use page builders anymore. Um, and in the monolithic architecture of WordPress, changes you make are immediately reflected on the front end. So you can view them and see how your changes have uh, impacted the way the site looks. Whereas when it's decoupled, that's not the case. Um, and so you can't use page builders anymore like Elementor or Gutenberg is even a challenge and things like that. Um, you end up needing to recreate common and basic WordPress functionality. So stuff that we just take for granted on WordPress, like RSS feeds and forms and redirections and all sorts of stuff like that. User management, it's, uh, it becomes a different ball game when you're running it on decoupled, in a decoupled headless architecture. It demands much more developer resources, first to create the headless WordPress site and then also to continue managing it. Every time you want to do something, you'll need more developer resources than the standard WordPress. So in the example of even with the page builders, you want to create a new page that looks a certain way, you can't. You need to pull in the developers to make sure that whatever page you're building is reflected on the front end. And it can be frustrating for non-developers because of that. And so you end up having, trying to simplify, but can often end up with like a tangle of stuff. Your back end, which needs its own management and server, and your front end, which needs its own management and server, and, and different tooling that you're using to integrate it, and things like that, and it can start to feel like a bit messier than regular WordPress. So um, there's different ways that you can do headless WordPress. Um, there's there's more products out there than there were, let's say, even six months ago. There's an interesting product called Frontity, where the front end is can be created with React, but you but it's tightly integrated with WordPress. So you do get some of the benefits of regular WordPress. 
Um, I'm going to talk about Stratic because I'm from Stratic. So with Stratic, you get to use WordPress as usual, and you get the headless output and all of its benefits. Um, it's an end-to-end -end platform. So the Stratic takes care of hosting the WordPress site, which happens in the containerized environment, which shuts down when not in use, through to generating the static decoupled and headless version of the site and serving it up through a CDN. Everything's configured for you. You don't have to try to patch together different tools and different parts. It just all is there. Um, you get the ease of use of WordPress and the headless benefits of speed, security, and scalability. You can use your existing WordPress site with standard headless. You've got to throw out whatever site you have and build a new one. Um, here you get headless without having to throw out your site. Um, you can have staging static sites on Stratic. So if you make changes, you want to make sure they look okay on static. You don't have to deploy to production to check it. Um, and we have native support for database driven functionality on the static site, which is not the case in most um, headless implementations um, where they have to be recreated. So for we support contact form seven and gravity forms out of the box, 301 redirects, they're all applied to the static site search. We automatically integrate a very high quality search solution called Algolia. Um, we support WPML and Polylang, though multi-language site management continues to be the same, RSS feeds and user management. Um, this is a testimonial from one of our customers, which is a very big fintech company called Payoneer. Migrating our WordPress websites from our previous hosting to Stratic immediately increased our site speed significantly. This contributed to lowering our bounce rate, increasing our conversion rates, and also helped improve our SEO. Um, their conversion rate uh, increased by 3%, which for them is very, very significant. I think it's significant in general, but for them, it has a big impact on their bottom line. Um, this is a free ebook which you can download if you want to try to learn more um, about headless wordpress we wrote a guide to it and it's at this url bit.ly slash headless dash wp dash ebook um, it goes through what is wordpress why do people care how can you use it what do you need to keep in mind so this very fast talk is in more or less in there but in expanded version with more detail um, and that's it. So thank you. Uh, you can try out Stratic. We have a free trial. It's 30 days. Um, and uh, you could just get up and running very, very easily. And in one click, you'll also have the static headless WordPress website. So thank you. That was an awesome 30 minutes collectively of a lot of information. So thank you, each one of you, for sharing a little piece in your world. Um, to be honest, it's a little over my head and what I deal with in a day to day. So it was really fascinating stuff that I definitely want to dive into more. Um, specifically, we did have a question, David, uh, that you're going to share the links to the plugins that you were using um, in the resources. I just wanted to confirm that. Yeah, it'll be on the Angry Creative website and on SlideShare transcripts, all that kind of stuff uh, next week. Now it's too late on a Friday for me to do it, but it will be there. Thank you. Awesome. And uh, one thing that came up for me, uh, Miriam, uh, as you were talking about uh, headless and WordPress, this is a new topic for me. So I did a little bit of research before your talk, and it really kind of blew my world up a, a little bit in the way that I understand WordPress and what it to be. So I wonder how you have conversations with folks that are new to this topic, other than kind of in a presentation format, maybe what those kind of casual conversations look like, or even in a client um, conversation for folks that are new to this. Um, and how you ease them into maybe making this this more comfortable because it's very appealing to have a faster website and higher security um, But for some of those other things that may be a concern. I, I wondered about that maybe for my own personal <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a really good question um, the truth is that most people who uh, find Stratic or are interested in Stratic they are already familiar with the concept of WordPress they tend to be to be they tend to be developers of some kind. Um, and often they're managing a company organization website and um, they're feeling the pain. And Either through other work or their current work, they are um, familiar with this concept of headless. And so they start looking for solutions around static headless. Uh, there's another term for this kind of emerging industry that's called Jamstack. So they'll look for that also and then they'll find us. But um, we're still at a stage in terms of this becoming the, uh, the level of awareness within the WordPress ecosystem that it's very early stage. So, um, you know, if people have questions or want to talk about it, I'm always happy to. But um, aside from giving talks or like the resources that we have on our site, we don't try to like 
uh, explain it to people who don't want to really hear about it at this point. Um, but uh, anyone who does want to hear about it or like, or even is just a little bit curious, you know, we're always happy to ask questions. Um, but yeah, a lot of people just, it's, they're, it's not there yet. So who are the kind of clients that come to you? Um, so, so far, it's a lot of types of, um, well, first of all, it tends to be tech companies uh, who have like a SaaS product where they're using WordPress as their front facing site and that's like generating leads for them and are, like for branding and all that. Um, so they're already like, in, as an organization, more technically oriented, you could say. And then within the organization, it tends to be someone who's like a, a web lead or IT even, DevOps. Um, often the organization will task someone uh, who's a type of developer and say to them, keep our WordPress site alive and well, please. Thank you very much. Good luck. And that person <laughs> is not so excited about that task that they've been given because it ends up being something that keeps them awake at night. To certain extent. Like WordPress can be unexpected when it's running in its, its regular format. And uh, they just really, they don't want to have to think about it all the time. And so once it's once they're on Strat, so they, that's who comes to us. And um, once they're on Stratic, they report peace of mind over and over. Like they don't, you know, if, if we're, if the WordPress site breaks on Stratic, it's so disconnected from the, the live static version that it doesn't even matter. You can fix it like in a relaxed way instead of like in hysteria about how the site is broken, that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, those, those are our, those are most of our customer base so far. Thank you. Um, I know you have to run. Does anyone have yeah. any other questions for Miriam? We're good. I'm overwhelmed, but I appreciate <laughs> you taking the time to introduce the topic. I know with PWA, um, it just sort of got into it with progressive web apps. I think there was something, some crossover when years ago when PWA first came out about headless. Yeah. Um, yeah, there is crossover the, among these different yeah. approaches. But like you said, I do need to run. And I appreciate the flexibility yes. around that. And uh, sorry about that. But I'm on Twitter at Miriam Schwab. I can be reached at Miriam at stratic.com if anyone wants to email me with questions. You can go to our site. We have a lot of resources there. So uh, happy to continue the conversation. But in the meantime, I must go. So Thank you. have a great weekend. Bye, Thank you. Bye-bye.